So when learning guitar, it's common that people want to know where they're at. Are they a beginner, an intermediate level, or advanced player? And the best way I've actually heard this put was from this comment by someone called Sordell, who summarized it as beginner, they're learning the guitar. Intermediate, they can play the guitar. Advanced, they're amazing at guitar. And I concede, I can't put it any better than that. That is so succinct. And I think that's a brilliant way to summarize it, actually. But it got me thinking, what would my recommended songs be for people to test very quickly what level they're at? Are they at an intermediate level yet? Or are there still some gaps in their playing that would actually be considered more beginner level? So I came up with a list of five songs that could be learned very quickly, or at least the bit that we're testing is a very short section that can be learned quickly, but can we play it? Can we do the thing that this is working on? And my first suggestion is the riff from the song Faith by George Michael, which starts with a B major bar chord and uses something called the bow diddly rhythm. Here's our B major bar chord at the seventh fret with the first finger, and here it is with the bow diddly rhythm. Now that actually works on two things at once. Can we get this B bar chord ringing out and control whether we're having those notes ringing out or whether we're muting those notes, which is all done with this hand. And can we get that in coordination with this rhythm, which at its most simple would be one, two, three, four, five. So five heard notes per bar. Can we get it with the muting? and then get this right hand hitting some of those mutes to give it the to give it the pop. I have a full tutorial to that song, which I'll link up here and in the description below, where I really talk you through that. But I want that to be one of the songs that you guys test with yourselves to see where you're at with it, both from the rhythm and chord point of view. You could even have a go with it with an E major chord, which is actually the Bo Diddley song that this is uh, named after, that this rhythm is named after. My second choice also combines some relatively fast chord changes with some strumming uh, techniques that we want intermediate players to really be able to nail. It's the same four chords looped throughout the entire song. This is Saved Tonight by Eagle Eyed Cherry. <laughs> Now you can tell with that pattern, there's some palm muting, which is this technique of having the outside of the palm of the hand just on the strings here. There's a relatively fast chord change between A minor, F, C, and G major. With a couple of tricks, this way of playing an F, rather than a bar chord or rather than just the F major seven, which many beginners will prefer, we're going for this hybrid, where we are having a little uh, bar of the thinnest two strings moving to a C chord, and then this way of playing a G, which I nickname a George Harrison G, because he preferred this option. Really cool for a quick change between the C chord and the G chord. But just like with the George Michael song, is the combination of doing these two together at the same time, which can throw people off and is a great acid test for a two bar riff, essentially, looped for the entire song. One and two and a three and a four. But it should be instinctive. If you're ever struggling with these rhythms, it's not about the downs and ups. It's about being able to feel that rhythm underneath it. So maybe try tapping out these rhythms before you actually strum them. It can really help. So for example, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up. Can you tap it? Because if you can't tap it, you're probably not gonna be able to strum it, especially not with a chord change. So down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up. Doing that kind of thing. And, and we don't even have to stick to the exact same rhythm all the time, especially not if you're singing and playing at the same time. It's not what artists do. What artists do is keep going with that main rhythm, but very slightly just to give it some feel. And that's what I'm doing here. As This is a great example of that, to try yourself. is another telltale sign of an intermediate to advanced guitar player that they're adding those extra bits that really make the difference. Again, it goes from they can play guitar to they're amazing at guitar. 
different thing from just nailing one pattern and keeping it exactly the same all the way through. Next up, I wanted to add a finger style piece in there, and there are many I could have chosen, but one that has a huge knock-on effect being able to play a lot of other songs would be Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. This goes from the C major chord with the riff on the first finger uh, to a G chord, same kind of um, G that we played in the previous song. E minor to a D, basically played Blackbird style. And the first place I learnt those chord shapes was actually in this song. So again, basic chords actually, C, G major, E minor, D major, but played in a slightly different way, which works as more towards that they can play guitar and also getting on the edge of their amazing guitar because it leads on to other things that you couldn't have imagined just with basic open chords while you're learning. Great example. For my next example, I wanted to include something that just looked at the picking hand and picking arpeggios, so single notes out of a chord. And my example for this is the Jeff Buckley cover of Hallelujah. Um, so the original key of this song is in the key of C major, and it can be a real intermediate um, player thing to know that if we put a capo at the fifth fret and play a G major, that actually sounds like a C chord. It's playing all the notes of a C chord, and there are different ways we can play a C major chord, but this is a really common one because the key of G major means that we have mainly open chords and when we pick the strings, we've got a lot of open strings ringing out and it can just make the most of a lot of things that sound great on electric or acoustic guitar. So here's the gist of that riff. Now, of course, that can be played with finger style as well. But it's just an intermediate level technique where you, sh you should be able to get a similar sound with the pick as without so that you can spot the difference in a song, whether it might be using uh, the fingers because it's a little softer, or with a pick, and that just sort of general arpeggio playing is something that you should be able to learn in any song that's around an intermediate level, and you should be able to hear that it is an arpeggio. That it's a single chord ringing out, and we're playing single strings out of that, out of that chord. And my final example does a similar thing to that where we're picking single strings out of a chord, so picking arpeggios, and this is wherever you will go by the calling. And just that idea of picking single strings rather than always strumming every string or strumming a few strings is something that you really want to be picking out. It's something that I'm even accentuating when I play Save Tonight, when I do this. Picking that little hammer on bit. It's actually a pretty advanced technique, actually. It gives the guitar playing something that elevates it from just strumming with a, with a standard pattern which strums all six strings. So hopefully that gives you some starting points as to what level you're at and some things to try to see whether it is your picking that needs a bit more practice, chord changes, or it, is it actually your general rhythm rather than rhythm playing, just your general feel for rhythm, being able to tap out rhythms that might be something you need to work on more than even the playing side of things. Let me know in the comments where you feel that you were at and also what songs you're learning to perhaps get you up to or advance from an intermediate level. There'll be more help that I'll leave in the description below and on the screen now if you wanna follow up with this video with more of my stuff. And I hope to see you in one of those other lessons. Bye bye for now.